decided to come back to the house. I actually did another update, but it wasn't that much different. Although we had done, um, I think it's a quality control walkthrough, and we pointed out some of the issues, which actually Woodside did a really good job of noticing themselves and marking it. The contractor or the site manager or super, I'm not sure what they're called here, did a really good job of going through before we came. So everything that we had noted, he had also had on his sheet. So great job and hopefully that continues. But I thought I'd come back today and I wasn't actually expecting. That's the first layer of, I think they call it stucco. So it's like a scratch layer. So they put that first layer on, which I haven't seen. So you're sharing with me. And I think they sort of rough it up a little bit so that they can put the next layer on and then the final finish. So that's going to be interesting. I'm going to see that. I also thought I'd take you through and point out some of the issues we did notice. Maybe they'd fix some of them, but at least I can point them out and hopefully it helps somebody. And I'll also go through some of the mortgage options because I know somebody mentioned, why don't we do a 30 year and then overpay it? Now, the reason why you wouldn't do that in this case is because the cheapest 30 year I can get is 5.65%. So you're attracting interest no matter how much you overpay it at 5.65% per year. The cheapest 15 year currently is 4.3% around that. So you're attracting interest at a much lower rate. Now, of course, there's a huge jump. However, because the interest rate is so much lower and because it doesn't pose that much threat to our income, it doesn't take a big toll on whether we'll have to change our life. I think that's the better option. However, for some people, it is better to take the 30 year and overpay it. It presents way less risk, uh, simply because you have to meet far lower payment. If you do fall onto hard times, then you've only got a smaller payment. So I think the difference is $1,000 approximately. That's a huge amount of money that you haven't got to find if you fall on hard times. I'm banking on that we won't. <laughs> And if we do, it's a bad time for everybody anyway. So that's the reason why I've gone for that option. Um, we're struggling a little bit at the moment. Woodside, I think their sales contract that they had, had the wrong address on it. So they can't give that to me at the moment. And all of the lenders need that to lock in a rate. I wanted to lock in two days ago, but I couldn't because of that reason. So a little bit frustrating, the rates keep going up. However, hopefully it'll be resolved soon and I can finally get all of the lenders to look at each other's offers and match each other and then I can pick the best one for me. At the moment, Bank of America is actually turning out considerably cheaper, I think, by about 0.3% at the moment. But I think once I get that locked in, I can present that to the other ones and see if we can get it to come down. Anyway, let's go inside and have a look. One of the first things that we got shown was this set of water things. This one is the main high pressure water that comes in for the fire suppression system. And so that doesn't blow the rest of the house. They have to put in a water damper or dampener, depending on how you pronounce it. And that basically steps down the pressure. So this is for the irrigation system and this is for the mains into the house. So that was good to know. We also learned that some Americans shut it off when they go away so they don't get a leak in the house. So I'm not sure if we'll take that up, but it's definitely an option there. The other thing you'll notice around the house, I won't point it out everywhere, but they've sealed the house with this expanding foam anywhere where there's gaps this foam has been sprayed in everywhere and that seals the house up makes it nice and air stroke watertight we went through a lot of the electrical stuff the paneling this here let me walk around this is the loop that takes the solar pre-plumb so if we were to get solar panels they can run that all the way through up to the ceiling we learned that the discharge or the waste or the recycle for your soft water loop here here actually runs all the way upstairs which i'll show you shortly so it goes all the way upstairs and it dumps the recycle water into where your laundry room is so where the waste pipe is for the washing the first issue and the main one that we had in here is these pendants are in the wrong location. So on our drawing, our electrical drawing, they're drawn out right here where they've marked it with the green and they're drawn to be in the exact center of the kitchen island, which you can see is there. They have put them here, which is the wrong location. So they said they're going to resolve that. We left that with our sales advisor. He's going to get it moved over. Selena actually very specifically wanted it not right here, but right here, <laughs> so two centimeters or so. I don't know what that is in inches, maybe 0.6 eighths of an inch, 
Does that make sense? Yeah, maybe six seconds an inch. I don't know. So once they've moved that, that's fine. All of the rest of the lighting is good. You can see all of the sealant here. Before we walk through and show the others, hopefully the rear's been stuck out, it has. So you can see now the house is really starting to take shape and hopefully it comes up on camera. You can see how it's sort of like a rough finish. So it's not a smooth finish. This isn't gonna be what's presented at the end. This is roughed in so that they can put the next layer on and it sticks or ad adheres properly. Oh, and I can't remember if I mentioned, the reason you see all of these tiles placed and they look strategically placed because they are, it's to help the house settle quicker because they weigh so much. They put these on really early. You can see them even all the way up to houses up there. They put them really early so it weighs the house down and pushes it down so you have less cracking. So that's why they've been up for multiple weeks already. So this, I think they call it sheetrock here. I'm pretty sure sheetrock is a brand name, so maybe they use sheetrock interchangeably with what it actually is, which is the drywall, which is the wall that gets hung around here. Okay, the other... Oh, just to point out, all of the white cabling is normal voltage, I think, and in the US that is 110. The brown and the blue is low voltage. So this will be things like the thermostat and then the doorbell. And one other thing. This is what we have in the UK. So this is a 230 volt, I think. So all of our plugs are 230 volts. So we don't have to run this specialist cable in, but this is a 230 because the oven draws that much power voltage. I know nothing about electrical, but it's a lot more bit more than double required for the oven so that's why that's in it's also why we have gas dryers here that's because they need 230 and you have to pay for the upgrade upstairs which i'll show you otherwise you get gas and a standard socket this for everybody that's watched our previous videos this here was where the original mountain was you can see the holes for the lighting um but they spotted that straight away confirmed with us and they've moved it so it's actually four foot now so that's perfect and you can see what they do which is really good normally it's just these i don't know if these are two by four or two by six this looks like so you've got these two by sixes but it looks like because this would not be four foot and it would not be symmetrical and that's what we paid for they had to add on an extra piece of wood here on the two by six in order to get it in the perfect distance which i think is really good there wasn't much here to note except that they told us how they do the build up for the showers which is a combination of posh paper mache and what else is it tar to make sure that it's permanently sealed one and done you don't ever have to come back it won't crack this is interesting i wonder if they've put the wall up yet no so this will be where the ac unit goes and what threw me off massively was i couldn't work out why i couldn't see this on the show home that's because there's a wall that goes here once it's finished and then that sits behind it so you never see it so you don't really come down this side but it's interesting now seeing the first layer of the stucco it's starting to take shape the door the windows which i'm not sure whether i want to have them covered so i don't know whether to put something behind them if we look over here the neighbor will never see in so there's only that window up there there will be a wall i think it's about five foot so we might not need to do that what's a little bit odd is i went for the rain glass side which now means it's going to look a little bit strange with these i should have went for the clear glass never mind it's no major this was the other biggie which is interesting. So this is definitely wrong. And this was the major one that I was concerned about. And the contractor super said, yeah, that's completely wrong. It's supposed to be this one. So they need to come and take this out. <laughs> However, whoever's job it is to do the pressure testing, which is probably why that water's down there, has filled the bath. So what they do is they come around, fill up all of the water vessels and leave them to make sure there's no leaks. Now that's all well and good, but this is the wrong bathtub, so completely pointless. They need to pull this out, build it up, put that one in, 
and then test it. <laughs> but at least we know there's no leaks here now. I think they leave it for quite a while as well. Going into the utility room, one thing to point out here is we have jump ducts between the rooms. So those are these things here. So it allows the pressure to equalize between rooms and you can see another one there and that goes into the other room and so on. All of the rooms have that in the house, except this one, which will have a vent. And the reason is it has a gas appliance in there. So there's no jump up between there. It has to vent permanently. It also has a permanent on fan. So you can turn it off, but they recommend that you leave it on all day and night. I'm not sure how necessary that is. I think it's just as an extra safety precaution because of the gas. This here is the purge line for what was downstairs in the garage. So that purges the soft water regen and dumps it up here, which then the waste pipe dumps downstairs. I guess it's easier to do that. Yeah, they've definitely been testing the water because I can see it leaking here as well. And this is where there's standard 110 outlet, but gas fired. So rather than having to use a 230, which you could pay for and power in a electric dryer, you get gas and then there's a, I guess in a small furnace, so it heats it up in there. The other thing that I noticed, which I'm fairly confident we don't have in the UK, and please correct me if I'm wrong, you have hot and cold. And now I'm thinking about, it, I think the washing machine we have currently in our current place where we're renting is also hot and cold. And I'm fairly sure in the UK, it's just a cold feed and the washing machine itself heats it up. I wonder whether this again is an issue with the power. So if there was a 230, you could power the heater. So maybe it's just easier to feed in. If anyone knows why that is in the US or here, please let me know. I'm fairly confident that's the reason why though. Again, you can see the expanding foam everywhere. Every hole is filled. The final, <laughs> okay, I can't show you. So this is the scratch layer of stucco. But under here, once this is finished, we were told that it's a cold surface that, that they put down to prevent the surface ever getting hot, regardless of how bright it is or how hot it is. You can walk out here barefoot, which I'm going to test and hold them to. So during the middle of summer, which we'll be in here then, hopefully it's cold on my feet. Otherwise, I want them to come back and redo it. And the final thing, remembering this isn't a full walkthrough. We've done a couple of those videos. This is just the new stuff. In here is where the loft... No, sorry. We call them lofts in the UK. They call these attics. That's the loft in the US. This is the attic. So that's where the attic access is. And that gives access to possibly me, but it will never be because I have no idea what I'm doing. But somebody who knew what they were doing with the AC and furnace, but for us, it's gonna be an engineer. So if we ever need to service it, clean it, whatever, they actually have access through the walk-in closet which is a little bit different. And it does make the most sense because there's a platform that goes straight out to it. In my head, I imagined it being in the loft, not coming all the way through the bedroom, the bathroom, walk-in closet, and then up there. That's it for that short update of the house and the mortgage situation. Oh no, it's not. I've got one other thing, which I thought was fun. So I spoke to Bank of America and they pull your credit rating. Oh. Yeah, credit rating, credit history. And they pull it for all three credit agencies. So I would guess in the US that's Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. I hope that's right. And he gave me all of my credit scores. He said, oh, those are really good for being here one year. So I think it was 716, 718, and something else. All very similar. So he said, we have to take the lowest one. Uh, so it's 716. Then he pulled Selena's. And it's like, oh, okay. Hers is 680. So I was like, oh no. So he said, but we have to take the lowest, so it's 680, 686, of the lowest person. Great. So in actual fact, Selena, the only one earning US money, so he, she has all the income. I have absolutely no US income, has got a lower credit rating than me. So I've decided I need to teach Selena how to work the credit system. And it also goes to show that it's a system you have to learn. It's got very little to do with your income. As long as you know how to navigate it, you can have an amazing credit score within one year, just like me with no income, which is quite funny. Um, but otherwise, that's the end of today's short video, hopefully. Thanks for watching.